Hi there. We're back. Welcome to another episode of the Smoking Nerf News. You thought it was lost. You thought it was gone. But nope. Today we're smoking a Rocket Patel Cameroon 2003. But sadly the weather is so dry that when I dropped it on the floor accidentally, it did this. How do you handle that? Well, first off, you take your saliva like that. You wipe the excess off, and you let the heat cook it. This is, it actually works like glue. Some people don't like tobacco. Some people like cigarettes or paper media. Some people like those little things on the very end of it, you know, to put on there. And some people consider that a little wussy, but I don't. Hunter, Hunter Thompson used them. Yeah, no kidding. You remember he always had a cigarette holder? Yep. He was always changing it out. Because he always had something around to say, and he needed a new cigarette. That's right. So I personally think they're cool. Um... But I don't smoke cigarettes, so <laughs> if I did, I would use them. So anyway, <clears throat> this is the Chris Cartea, the original Mr. Jet. And I wish you all a merry, happy Christmas. I really do. Um, first off, uh, where is the Sita? I don't know. I um, am here. I haven't heard anything from Jet really recently. I try to keep in touch with people, but, well, let's just say... That is a really hard project, what they're trying to do. See that with two pieces. Um, retaliator. It takes a lot to cat it, to put it together. Okay, make it work. Uh, we did a lot of things that we had to change on it from the original design. Um, the trigger clearance was all wrong. All that stuff was wrong. Okay. It was all made for an Explorer, um, you know, UX RET. And we had to make it more standard retaliator uh, kind of sizes and dimensions. That even if you couldn't replace every part, like the plunger rod, for example, you could at least use the same triggers and stuff like that. Okay. Second, that all has to be made into tooling. A20 steel. That's a low carbon type of steel that's used for molds. And this is a big block of steel that you hit with a CNC machine. Do you know how long it takes to CNC something? Huh, seriously, I kind of like Hasbro's model where they don't really put up a uh, pre-sale. They just kind of, boom, there it is. But then again, that's Hasbro. That's a $10 billion company. They could do that. They've been doing toys for a long time. This is a little different. Uh, this is something where a little overrun product where you're going to have lower production runs. And it, it, it takes a lot to do. So, uh, be patient, honestly. Uh, the original the original version is being geared more for a retail market. Um, it's being I know that for a fact. The Omni kit that's in it is more for full-length darts. I think it's the best full-length kit to ever put on there. Um, I've used the, um, the Stage 3 RET before. Sold it, and sadly I got lost. <laughs> because the guy I sold it to forgot to give me the block number. Uh, and, but it... Honestly, even then, you had to pull it back all the way, okay, or else it wasn't going to load the clip. Either you had to slam in the clip because the clearance was right. Clearance is a bitch on a retaliator, man. I mean, seriously. And, so, and on a long shot, too. That's why on the additional models that I want to design, um, I'm putting in a little more clearance on the pusher. The ones that are totally new, they're not long shot, not red, not anything, okay. I'm doing that. And... Um, so how is Jet? I don't know. I've I've talked a little bit to the production manager and a few other things, but pretty much they don't really talk to me. Oh well. I only have 11 designs I can use. Oh well. But I wish them the best of luck. Um, I hope things work out with them, and I hope things uh, they work. I hope you all get your cedars and you all understand from a shell point of view, plunger two point of view, and a take apart point of view. It's a great blaster. And who can't just throw another breach in there? I could throw another breach in there. But they also have the the RT Alpha. That's a that's gonna be that looks pretty good. Okay. So let's see. What else is new? Oh those dead pole blasters. Jeez, man. Uh, okay, so I bought a set of dead pole blasters. My nephews and nieces fell in absolute love with these. And I was like, okay, I gotta find another set of dead pole blasters. And lo and behold, Corsair 7 and 8, you couldn't, I couldn't hunt down the white ones and just buy them from Hong Kong and have them sent here. They get there by Christmas, right? Well, okay. 
Couldn't do that. They, of course, want those ones. They go, hey, that's not the way they Chris showed us. You know how it is. Okay, kids, kids, you got to get the same thing. Or it's not going to be fair. So I hunted down a set of Deadpool blasters. And there's one place you can find them. And that's the GameStop on Carl Boyle Road across from Walmart in Santa Clarita. Dude. Seriously, every other place, I couldn't find them. They're sold out. They were such a hit. And they're $70 now, not $60. $70. Why they upped them in price? That game stopped. Well, actually, it's more like this. More like that. Yeah. That's when you really do. You don't want to just stick your hand up their ass and punish them. You want to stick your hand up their ass and say hello. Because, fuck, that sucks, man. I'm just trying to get a couple blasters for my nephews and nieces. So, nephew would get one, my niece would get one, of course. But, dude, you know, that, 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 was, that wasn't even the worst part. The worst part was a couple days ago, my friend, uh, I went to go uh, to uh, Pittsburgh, not Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Pittsburgh, California. That's Bay Area. That's San Francisco. Oh, and I finally got to see San Francisco. I finally got to see the Bay. Now, I'm not kidding in that video where I actually say, oh my God, I've never seen the Bay. It's so huge. And I mean, I've driven by it twice, but it's either fogged up. Well, last time there was a, there was a big, that big Santa Rosa forest fire. You remember? Yeah. Fuck. A duck, right? But I finally got to see it. And, oh my God. I can see why people want to live there. It's gorgeous. Gorgeous. Would I pick it over a house in Malibu? No. Would I pick it over a lot of places? Yeah, I would. And he calls me up and he goes, Hey, how about that Boba Fett blaster? You know, the one with the mask and the, and the you know, the, the, the red ammo and all that stuff. You know, they want 90 bucks for it. 90 bucks? I knew what it was because I know Nerf enough to know that that's just a rival Apollo blaster with a mask and some red ammo. 90 bucks? Are you fucking kidding me? 90 bucks? So they ran out of the Deadpool blasters. And all of a sudden, they want to sell an Apollo for 90 bucks. I'm going to mind face mask is 15 probably, the magazine, all that, yeah. But, and the red ammo is so nice and special, it gets lost in grass so easy. If you guys remember my test, oh yeah. But, do you know, GameStop's just going a little too far with this blaster thing. They're going to up the price when they sell out of them, like that much? That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. And then they're going to charge... $90 for a Star Wars blaster? That is ridiculous. Oh my god, the white one at uh, Toys R Us is 30 bucks, And the normal ones are 20 So he got a normal one. And he, and apparently he loves it. My friend Billy Simmons. And by the way, Billy Simmons has a photography company. And he does really good. Go for it. Okay. But GameStop's going a little too... Well, let's just say a little too far on the prices. Um... $60 for a Deadpool, for said Deadpool blasters. I would pay that, easy. You know? But to up at 10 because, okay, you're a dick, and your last store, or one of the last stores, at least from the stores we looked at, they were all sold out. Everywhere in the area but that store. And that's because it's a really shitty location where people buy, barely drive by. Um, it's across from a Walmart, but everyone goes to Walmart. No one even knows the GameStop. As a matter of fact, I didn't know there was GameStop there. Um, and they want to charge $10 for the privilege of being the last people to have it? Ridiculous. That is ridiculous. So, um, yeah, I know. It's stupid. It's stupid. And let's see. How am I doing? I'm doing good. I'm about to go through and upgrade my blasters. I'm thinking of giving my Bird of Prey blasters maybe a fiberglass slash carbon fiber shell. I'm not sure yet. And I'm retooling a lot of my blasters right now. Um, I had gone through and I redid the Mauser fire like you saw. I gave it a little bit thicker fiberglass. Um, going through my um, Big Blue, my, uh, my prototype, uh, my, my prototype uh, Zeus 2 with the Mr. Jet logo on it, of course. I'm getting that a little bit up to code. I replaced the spring on the on the uh, Red October Red Retaliator. Um, that one, of course, is with the first long spring uh, recon retaliator ever used. Really, if you think about it, the Prophecy has uh, basically, they got the idea from that. 
Only thing is, I'm not using like a K26 or a C882. I'm using a, a number 62 Hillman. Now, 62 Hillman, that is a really fast action spring. Tighter coils, and you have to file down the plunger on the inside of it. And it's four cross numbers, and then you just crown the, the back side of it. It's no big deal. But you have to file it down a bit because the inner diameter on it is a lot smaller on that spring. Um, so it's not a standard size uh, red spring. And if you try to make one four inches, well, that's not going to have enough solid space to close. So you really do have to make it uh, a long spring. I will 24 coils. If I want to make it go really fast, I do 27. But 24 will do 230 feet per second with my brass breech, um, which is really cool. But I'm also doing the Chrono Magnum. And so far, i got the plant working. I'm working on a handle system for it, which is going to be really nice. It's not going to be some big clunky thing. It's going to be it kind of integrated fiberglass like the uh, Mauser Fire is. Uh, not only that, I'm making a Gatana Mag Mauser Fire too, but they just kind of take time. And then I'm making a long draw uh, Pink Crush variant. Um, long draw, three inches of draw. And it's based, it's going to be called Ultra Match Magnum, but in reality, I didn't design it. Uh, I didn't come up with the idea originally. The original idea came from Dwayne Stanley, Frank Godzilla. He made the long draw ones. Okay. It is going to be coupler. Like, my new Ultra Match is coupler. For years, everyone's like, hey, you're basically got a little Civil War rifle there. <laughs> you know? <laughs> it's like, so nope, not anymore. That thing's coupler. Uh, it does pretty good, but I have to put some coupler guides in there make it make it load a little easier. Um, but I did that by making it with, an, with a little fiberglass space frame in there. So that works really good. That fiberglass stuff is really cool. The only problem is, is I don't really know. It's like a lot of stuff I do. I don't really know how to approach it to show you. You know what I mean? Um, I really like the Chaos Blaster a lot. Um, the Chrono Magnum is going to be bitching. I can tell you right now. The Chrono Magnum is going to be bitching. Um, the Explorer Darts. We all saw the new Explorer Darts for 35 100 You know what? I like the fact that they're cut straight, but they're still eraser heads. You know, they're still eraser heads. And when I tried to push for darts that didn't use, you know, non-marking rubber as the as as the rubber, uh, something a little nicer, something that's just physically like silicone, but you can injection mold it. I can't tell you the compound. Sorry, trade secret. And I can't tell you what glue I would use either. Also trade secret, and also special to the compound. But we would have perfectly straight silicone-like darts that you probably couldn't even tell were silicone unless you tried to use silicone glue and found out it didn't work. That's the only way you'd ever know, okay? Um, because it's actually an injection molded, uh, it's an injection molded type of urethane that you can't find on the open market. But it's not expensive. It's not that that bad. It's it's uh, compared to normal polyurethane. I think it's about a pound or two, maybe a cent or two more per pound. It's just uh, made in a certain way to get me a thirty-eight durometer and glueable, more glueable. But I think that thirty-five dollars for a hundred darts. And I know, man, I've made darts. Okay, I made darts. I know how expensive it is to do. I know that I was selling them at $40 for silicone heads. $40, a hundred. And that was even hard to make money on because it was just so labor intensive, you know? But I have a feeling that what Hang does is he builds them himself. Um, that's cool, except, oh man, they're just, they're just so expensive. That's just so hard to do. You know, I would love to just make a machine to do it and to make those ends straight and everything. But the Chinese darts, you know, they're good for shooting around. They're good for trying out. Sadly, the only ones I really like, excuse me, I got to relight. Um, the only ones I really like are the uh, ACC version 5s. So the 3s are okay, but I'm seeing some range loss with the 3s. When you first fire them, you don't see range loss. Thank you, wind. But what happens is, when you start to, I know, get a lighter, right? 
when you start to um, fire them, what happens is that those the, the, the foam expands, the tips expand, and the seam between the head and the and and the foam expand. What costs you a lot of range is that seam. Now remember what Howard Hughes says: flush rivets, right? Flush rivets. Absolutely no drag on the rivets, and because of that, he was able to break the speed record for a plane. Now, he did not break it for a sailing plane. There was actually a sailing plane that could do 400 miles an hour, but the people at Gettysburg World Records weren't there. And not only that, um, but, but people knew it was 400 miles an hour. Uh, and they actually recorded it. it was 400 miles an hour from one place to another, and it averaged at 406 miles an hour. Um, but, be honest, uh, it, it did help. Every little thing helps, especially when you're talking about super light projectiles. It's a study that not a lot of people have, have really studied. Before this, let's face it, you had airsoft BBs, but not projectiles. Okay, come on, light, 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 you run, righteous son of a bitch. Oh, well. And it's going out. So, not actual projectiles that can spin, that actually use the air for loft, because even like a high power rifle bullet does not use the air quite for loft. It will cut through the air, but it won't use it to actually loft. If you want to tell me a 150 grain um, full metal jacket, 308, lofts through the air, I'll leave a section of comments, we'll talk, but yeah, I will tell you no, no, definitely not. Um, it definitely is not an airfoil. These are actual airfoils. There's not a single projectile in the world that behaves like a nerf dart and never will be okay this is why people that work on these professionally they have to be really really knowledgeable nerf people like me or hang or alex kong or you know people that really know modding or, or captain slug for example who made the first uh made the first safety slugs and made the caliber which is a good blaster um and but i'll be i'll be honest let me get into that in a second okay um, so, you know, they're expensive, they're rubber head, but I kind of understand, okay, this is probably why they're expensive. Because if you walk into Explorer Shop, and I have a couple times, okay, back in the day I got a chance to before, you know, hang burn me. <laughs> because that's the kind of personality, you know, I can't make any money off of him. Okay, well, I guess he's not my friend anymore. <laughs> um, he does, to his credit, everything by hand. Everything by hand, and his two machinists do everything by hand, okay? Everything is machined. Everything is, is done worth what. You can talk about his practices. We can talk about certain things that he uses on certain materials. Design aspects, this and that. We can talk about the fact that he really needed a, 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 studded, t a, 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 a studded rod with a C-clip at the end of his um, echo bolt sleds, and then the echo bolt sleds would never break. We can, uh, we can do that all day long. But the matter of fact is that well, I guess my point I'm trying to get to is between jets, between everybody, this is not easy stuff to do. It's not easy stuff to do. It's very low uh, production runs in relativity to a manufacturer who takes small parts like this and make 10, 20, 50, 100,000 of these. And we're only talking about a few thousand, maybe 5,000 parts. Hey, if you sell 5,000 or something, that's pretty great in the nerf industry. Pooh. Yeah. But um, the problem is is to go larger scale, we have to go to a wider base, okay, wider customer base. And I saw evidence of that. I talked to um, the production manager over at Jet, um, and I told him, hey, you know what? You really should do some outside ads, outside of the NIC, outside of Facebook, outside, okay? And I was watching Starsky and Hutch on my computer in my room. Starsky and Hutch, I know, I like old 70s shows. What the hell, you know? And uh, there was an ad for Jet Blasters explaining the, uh, the 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 breach, the alpha kit breach, which is brilliant. And Alex was so intelligent, and he had such an intelligent response, it only took him a minute and a half to break it down and say it. He said it so elegantly and so well, you know? Um... I thought that was genius, you know? It was the same thing as when I um, had their director. The director's name is John Lim. He's uh, 
So don't bug him about the CETA. He wouldn't know. He sees movies. Okay. He, he's the one that does all their videos. He's their director. And he is a brilliant director. Okay. You see me in this long, drawn-out conversation that I do. Okay. And then you see the videos that I used to do for Chet. And you can see a huge difference. It's not just the one saying it. It's not just your actor. It's your director. More than anything, it's your director, your editor, and producer that makes a film. Your writer, too. But the, the real look and feel in selling a film, unless it has a really horrible script, that's what it is. That's what it is. Your cinematographer, your producer that puts it all together. Okay. Uh, I know this because I tried to produce a film once. Yeah. And he's he's good. He's really good. I, I think he's he's up. He's probably up there with maybe maybe uh, maybe Dante. Uh, you know Dante Spinante, which is one of my my favorite cinematographers actually. And he really he really brings it out. So at any rate, the Caliburn. My last thing I want to say. Caliburn is a good blaster. The thing is, I think it highly depends on how well it's three D printed. A lot of people are talking about having problems with the catch, this and that. Well, why not hit the, the catch with a little bit of uh, file, like it's two smooth edges. Hey, that'd be great, you know. Even fill it in with some fiberglass and then sand it. That'd be great, you know. Um, the people that do it, you know. You can buy it in many ways. You can buy it, one, just with the parts and the 3D printed files. You can, you can print it, you can buy it with, I believe, the parts and the 3D printed parts. Or... You can buy it fully assembled. And I've known some people have had problems with the catch. Okay. And and that. Well, uh, I would just go with a higher fill rate. You know, or go PLA instead of ABS. That would probably work. Um, but I got to say, good blaster. It, it, it subscribes to the um, full length K26. As you know, it's a different philosophy than mine. That doesn't make it bad. It just means I design differently. That's all. But... There is, in there, a success when it comes to making something in the Nerf community because this is something that is viable at short run, okay? Um, making a big steel mold for 100,000 parts, well, okay, maybe that's not so viable. Not, not until this gets a little more popular, which I think once they figure out how to make these shoot straighter than paintball guns, it will be, but just not right now. So, you know, the whole thing with Jet and the whole thing with caliber and everything else on the prophecy which i see several of the things that were in CETA and my designs uh was copied some of it um but a lot of it no a lot of it really nice like uh i liked what they did with the plunger tube they made it really really like padded how many people have not how many people broken a retaliatory plunger tube gosh i must have broken a half dozen of those at least okay um happens all the time nice to have a stronger plunger tube and i like the the pump grip, even though it's not quite my style. And, well, somebody actually brought me one of those. I think it was Sun June, actually. He brought me one of those. And the screws broke off at the head because they were made by the pole stamping the head on there rather than one piece. When you buy nuts and screws, trust me, that few cents of making it one piece made out of a one-piece die really matters <laughs> on structural stuff, okay? Um, but other than that, not my cup of tea, you know. Prophecy's not my cup of tea. Plus, I have a freaking smoking retaliator, so I don't give a shit. Uh, let alone a smoking long shot. If I'm going to go and I'm going to shoot anything magfit, it's going to be that Zeus, okay? Um, with a 16-inch barrel and 18 kilograms. And I could go stronger if I want to. I just don't want to. Um, yeah, you know? Um, I have to say it's, it's pretty nice. And Cena's going to have a hard time competing with that. But CETA is its own animal, I'm telling you. So many advantages with that, uh, I can see. Um, I hope they come out with the, with, the, with the Alpha Breach at the same time as the Blaster. And maybe they are. Maybe that's one reason why it's taking a while to make. Um, I personally uh, know that that many details. A Blaster is not just one or two parts. It's, you know, if you're talking about the freaking... Chrono Blaster, it's 32 parts. <laughs> That's insane. Who the fuck needs 32 parts out of a pistol? But, you know, okay. Um, I'm done complaining, okay? So, anyway, this is Chris Cartea saying, don't you go changing. 
And remember, if you ever get in trouble, you can always call the right people. You can message me here, but I'm not really active here. You're most better off messaging me Facebook, um, Messenger, that sort of thing. Um, and I will try to come to the rescue. Until then, we're changing.